More than 1,200 people injured and tens of millions of dollars worth of damage. That's how Russia's Ural is entering its first day of recovery from a devastating meteorite explosion. Otis Igor Piskunov is at the epicenter and brings us the details. Thankfully, the night uh, passed quietly and without any incidents in Chelyabinsk, since there were fears that more meteors were going to hit the area. Nothing of the kind happened, but the consequences of Friday's meteor are still quite a handful, and the main challenge for now is to repair the damage, especially all the broken windows in homes, since we are in the Urals. It's not exactly summer here, and overnight temperatures did drop away below zero, although authorities said that they've already managed to restore and repair around one-third of uh, the damage. But it's not only about shattered glass. Lots of old buildings were damaged as well, like this factory there behind me, where parts of the wall and roof just collapsed, which is remarkable since we're around 100 kilometers, which is sort of 60 miles away from yeah. where the meteor fell on Friday. The explosion was so powerful, NASA says it was equal to around 20 nukes dropped on Hiroshima. Thankfully, these explosions uh, caused by the meteor uh, were not accompanied by lethal radioactivity. For more on what happened here on Friday, here's this report. It wasn't a bird, a plane or Superman, but something much louder, brighter, faster and many times more terrifying. This big bright light came shining across the sky, you know, blinding, brighter than the sun. It was around 9 a.m. when the skies were suddenly lit up by a meteor flying over Chelyabinsk, breaking into three parts and leading a striking trail of smoke before vanishing. Just minutes later, the city and the surrounding areas were literally rocked by a series of massive explosions. I immediately called uh, one of my teammates who lives in my building and I... You know, I couldn't get through to him. My phone didn't work, so I was a little bit scared at that point. So powerful, it damaged buildings and shattered windows all across the city. I was told that a plane crashed right into our building. Then we were told that a wall has been partly dislodged and metal structures inside were bent by the blast wave. It was very scary. Many were able to film the unearthly phenomenon, later flooding the web with footage as rumors spread of what it might have been. A stricken airplane, a satellite that fell out of orbit, even the beginning of the end of the world. An RT documentary crew that was working in the area suddenly found themselves at the center of events. We saw a huge tail in the sky, like from an airplane, and then there was bright fire and an explosion. The feeling was like the earth shattering. We thought a military jet may have crashed, or that it was some man-made disaster. It was a relief to find out it was a natural phenomenon. Over 1,200 people were injured, including over 200 children, mostly from pieces of shattered glass. Uh, one of the girls ran out uh, to take pictures, yes, and, uh, and she was thrown in by the wave that came after the, the flash. And then we, uh, my ears got blocked and uh, the whole room get, got filled with dust, just like, like a fog. It's estimated the meteor's weight varied from 10 to 40 tons, and its speed of around 20 miles per second gave it a huge amount of energy and made it very difficult to detect in advance. There are telescopes and uh, networks operated by NASA in the US and Roscosmos in Russia and the European Space Agency and others that are out there trying to detect and track asteroids. But honestly, there's a lot of them. There's hundreds of thousands. And their biggest focus is on the really large ones, ones that are hundreds of meters in diameter or kilometers in diameter that could potentially, you know, do to us what happened to the dinosaurs. Thankfully, no one was killed this time. And luckily, the meteor didn't hit any industrial facilities, including several nuclear sites located in the region. I must say, all of this really looks like a scene from a sci-fi movie, but it's really happened. And it's another reminder that no matter how advanced technology gets nowadays, when it comes to nature, often we can only watch helplessly and hope for the best. Igor Piskunov, RT, Chelyabinsk, Central Russia. And Lawrence Maxwell Krauss from the School of Earth and Space Exploration says this was a scientifically precious event. Meteors and asteroids all come, many of them come from the outer part of our solar system. 
uh, perturbations from the planet uh, Jupiter and other planets. There's a huge uh, uh, store of, of comets, asteroids uh, uh, out outside the orbits of Jupiter and outside, in fact, the outer solar system. Some of them periodically get disturbed by the gravity of the inner planets and get sent inward. Some of them are big balls of ice and become comets. Others are big balls of rock and impact on Mars and the Earth and the Moon. And um, uh, what's fascinating is, actually, if you, could, if you can collect some of this material, some of it is primordial. If we actually detect it and we can, we can get it right after it falls, we can actually measure material that hasn't been processed since the solar system formed four and a half billion years ago. So for scientists, it's a fascinating event. And I'm happy that people weren't killed. Uh, but, but if some of that material can be recovered, it'll be incredibly interesting and important for scientists. And we've got some amazing photos for you of the exploding space rock, as well as vivid examples of how powerful it was on RT.com. So do head online for that, as well as updates, footage and more comments from experts.